Hey, what's up? This is Gary from Raz Rentals. When it comes to repaints, I usually have one of two reactions. If it's something I don't like, I usually think that the figure is a piece of trash, cash grab, and you know, I wish the company would stop wasting my time and start putting out something that I wanna buy. Now, when it's something I like, then, then I think it's the greatest thing in the world, you know? <laughs> and then I wish the company would put out more and more and more. Uh, and, you know, they really should, because what an easy way to make some quick cash for the, the toy line. Now, what I have right here is definitely the latter. You know, this awesome glow-in-the-dark mutagen man. These glow-in-the-dark repaints or remolds or whatever you want to call them are everything I'm looking for. You know, cool color combinations, and as I said, they glow in the dark. Who doesn't love glow-in-the-dark action figures? They've always interested me, you know, even back in the 90s. Spawn was huge at the time, and, uh, you know, that toy line had, you know, so many variants, it was ridiculous. They even had, like, panty list variants of Tiffany or Angela, I can't remember. Super creepy, man. But, <laughs> you know, they also had very cool uh, color variants. Like, I always wanted the purple Tremor, too. I had the orange one. Um, and then even with uh, Spawn himself, right? You know, and even this affected my my art as a kid. Look at this, 1998. Uh, I drew uh, Spawn and Overkill here. And there was one action figure I always wanted. I always looked in the back of the uh, McFarlane mailway things, the, the, uh, the newsletter that they would put out every month. And I would always think, damn, I really wish that I could get that Necroplasm Spawn. But I never got it. <laughs> it's, but man, he was so cool. He was all green. He had a purple cape. And he glowed in the dark, you know, perfect. Yeah, it's amazing. I still have all these. And in the back of each one of them, I have the uh, the order form filled out with Necroplasm Spawn. Um, and I just never ordered it. I'd even call them and be like, do you still have Necroplasm Spawn in stock? And they'd be like, yes. And then I would never order it. I was a pain in the ass as a kid. I also used to... <laughs> I'd look through Wizard Magazine and I would look at like, you know, all the issues of Batman and I would highlight all the ones that would say like the, the villains I like, like Mad Hatter, Mr. Freeze, the Joker and all that. And then I'd call up my local comic book store and be like, you know, I'd give them this list of 20 comics and be like, do you have all these? And they'd be like, are you actually going to come in here and buy these? And I'd say, yes. And then I never did. It'd take those guys like 15 minutes to look up everything too, but they never made any money off of me. I was only like 10, give me a break. All right, so back on track here. Uh, this uh, brand new glow in the dark, I think it was Entertainment Earth exclusive, that's where I bought it from, but now you can get it on Amazon for like 40 bucks, which is crazy. You know, I've been wondering how that works. Like why are so many of these Ninja Turtle Ultimates on Amazon for like 40 bucks? Uh, is that somebody's overstock? Why can't Super 7 bring all these prices back down to 40 bucks? All right, so this glow in the dark mutage man comes in the brown mailer. Now, one thing uh, I got to point right off the bat here is the uh, the Baxter Stockman glow-in-the-dark action figure said, like, Bug Zapper variant or something like that, you know, Bug Zapper Glow, uh, Glow in the... Bug Zapper Blue Glow. <laughs> That's it. But Mutagen Man here doesn't have anything. He's just Mutagen Man. So, you know, it's just the same as any other regular Ultimates action figure. open this up and then already it's like you know something brand new and cool because look how neat that uh, box looks very neon pink that's ridiculously pink <laughs> but very neat you know and I'm going to show you the different boxes I have for some of these other super seven glow in the dark variants because I do like it I like all the packaging they use for these guys I think it's a neat motif and uh you know, it's nice to have them all, but unfortunately I, I can't throw them out because they look too cool. So here, you know, just like the original uh, Mutagen Man, you have the uh, the manhole here, but now you have like this glow in the dark um, splatter all around it. Yeah, see, Entertainment Earth exclusive. I bought this months and months and months ago from Entertainment Earth, and I just haven't been able to look at it because I've been too busy talking about mostly NECA Ninja Turtle toys. And a few Ultimates. In fact, I got to start working on my Casey Jones Ultimate review. Now that is pretty sweet looking. Um, <laughs> first, I think this is a very cool looking 
color combination. I like the greens. Green, when I was a kid, was my favorite color, so I like that. The golds on top all look really nice, too. And I just like the pale, glow-in-the-dark appendages. Um, so, yeah, it'll be very neat to open this guy up and take a closer look. Um, you know, I, I do like just how they took the, you know, basic, generic Ninja Turtles Ultimates uh, packaging and just kind of adjusted it, you know, adding all this like goopy glow in the dark mutagen around all over the place. Um, here on the back, you have uh, Mutagen Man, the nonstop mutating monster. It says, victim of Krang's insidious experiments, Seymour Guts woke up from a lab table only to find himself hideously transformed into Mutagen Man, a pathetic, dripping, ever-changing, mutating monster confined to a mechanical life support system that holds his mutating body together. Mutagen Man is now dependent on Oozed to replenish his deteriorating form. Forced to do Shredder's bidding in exchange for retro mutagen Ooze, Mutagen Man reluctantly performs dastardly deeds to get the substance his body so desperately craves. I'm pretty sure that is the exact same... There's nothing new here. That's the exact same profile that the regular Mutagen Man had. Real quick, just for some comparison here. Here you can see, uh, you know, how this um, awesome glow-in-the-dark packaging compares to a regular Ultimates packaging, you know. Pretty much the same exact thing, except you have the, uh, the goop all over the place. This is an extra foot soldier I bought because I've been meaning to actually make a foot soldier <laughs> review because I never made one way back when I did all the other ones from wave one. Um, here you can see, again, lots of goop everywhere. <laughs> and the back. All cool, cool stuff. One other thing really quick here. Here you can see this brand new Mutagen Man box next to some of the past uh, releases in this glow-in-the-dark variant series or whatever you want to call it from Super 7. You know, uh, if you look at the Baxter Stockman one, it looks like there's electricity, you know, from that bug zapper theme when, you know, Mutagen Man just has all the mutagen pouring out from underneath that uh, manhole cover. I like how the Baxter Stockman one had sort of that, like, burst of uh, electricity behind him. Uh, there's sort of something like that in the Mutagen Man one, it's, but it's very subdued. There's not much contrast between the the Mutagen pink and the actual background pink. So, like, I would even, I barely even noticed that that was there. And here's the back, you know? I don't know, just look at that Baxter Stockman box. Takes me back, you know? Remember when that came out, like, before Wave 1 came out? It was like a tease of the awesomeness that was about to, uh, you know, land at our doors. So I think I've waited long enough. Now it's time to open this guy up, and uh, I will talk to you in a second. Here he is, free from the cardboard and plastic that once imprisoned him, ready to glow in the dark, just like the people who eat fish out of the Susquehanna River. Man, this guy is really neat. You know, the somewhat translucent appendages really look like they're made out of a slightly softer material, almost like a chunky liquid mutagen. So that's, I think the transparency actually helps there. The color and texture though kind of make me think that he should be called glue stick man. But you know, I like him. The first thing that like really stands out to me is just that really nice looking green color that his, uh, his like life support system has. I don't know, I like the dark green. I like how his guts inside are a brighter green. And just the gold looks really nice. It's a, it's a very nice mix of colors. You know, gold and green always look good next to each other, just like money. There is no actual like turtle continuity or anything like that where Mutagen Man ever looks like this. There is like, this is not connected to really anything. So I don't know why exactly they chose to have these colors other than they just look cool next to each other. So if you take a closer look at this guy, um, one thing I noticed right off the bat was, uh, you know, a lot of the paint is really nice. Like I don't really see any splotches or anything like that. The gold is very clean, uh, you know, nice straight lines. Um, everything seems to be in place almost perfectly, like the pinks and stuff like that. Even the pinks on the muscles underneath the, um, the melting flesh. Um, on the back here, I mean, there's a little bit of a gold running off of the, uh, the screw there, but it still looks very nice. I don't know, the details on the, the back of this um, Ultimate's Mutagen Man, 
this guy and the original one just look really cool. Like they're very sharp and uh, I don't know. I think it's it's very nice. And we are I'm going to do a very uh, I don't know if it's a thorough, but I am going to compare this guy to the uh, you know, the Ultimates one. Uh, even in the back here, the feet and everything just look great. Um, the only problem is, you know, of course, is that like, of course, because you have this paint, that paint is not going to be glow in the dark. So the only bits that you're is really going to glow on him is, uh, you know, the white of the flesh. And then that, uh, I guess this tube up here. And then the, uh, the guts, Seymour's guts inside of there. Um, now this, uh, rod right here is not painted either. Um, but overall, you know, it looks pretty cool. As I said plenty of times before, I do like the color combination. I think it's very neat. The super pale, like, flesh tone makes him look almost like he's, like, um, like, been drained of his blood or something like that. Almost like, you know, old rotten flesh or something like that. Like a, it's like a zombie or something. Now, his guts inside, it looks like, I'm pretty sure that's all one piece together. But they put, like, a wash on the guts and the skull and the brain and um so that makes that part of his body darker than the eyeballs and the eyeballs are a nice like bright green with those pink uh pupils i don't know he's just a very neat looking action figure seymour doesn't have a ton of articulation but he's got some decent articulation you pretty much have nothing inside of his main body here because you know it's just this giant case for his guts and mutagen. Um, one of the biggest problems with the original Ultimates Mutagen Man is you can't put water or um, slime inside of him because it'll drip out. It's not like completely sealed or anything like that. And unfortunately, you can't even put the, um, you know, the little garbage bits inside of him too, which is a shame because that's, I mean, that's how I have my original one. Uh, but you can't, you can still take the top off. You can put water in there if you want to. It's just, uh, you know, going to drip out. I think, uh, who the heck was it? The one guy put water inside of him and it just like, you know, dripped out all through the day. So unfortunately, you know, you can't use that um, action feature. Uh, it, both of his arms have uh, swivel shoulders. You have a hinge. Um, you have a, a bicep. Well, you have an elbow cut. And then there's a hinge at the elbow. And then the, uh, the wrists rotate and you have a hinge there too. And the, uh, the hips, you know, they just kind of, you can get, a, uh, you can put them up about that high. You can move them out about that far, which is actually pretty decent. That's a pretty decent amount of movement forward, back. You kind of hit this, uh, vinyl diaper a little bit, but it still works pretty well. The knees, they did what they could to hide the, um, like the knee joints. And the elbow joints, that's why they have cuts up there. Um, these look okay. Like, I don't mind the flaps hanging over on top of these, uh, you know, lower legs. It's not like He-Man, Masters of the Universe Origins or anything like that, where the flaps look strange. Like, I could see maybe part of his body would be kind of dripping over on top of that metal there. Especially because he's, like, melting. Um, his ankle has a hinge. And uh, you have ankle rockers, but you can look at that. I pushed that like pretty far when I did that. Hmm. Oh well. So let's see. How well is this? There's certain aspects about this set, like I noticed a little different than the the regular one. Does that really? I mean, the original one moves a little bit, like that little bit back there. But this one seems to move a lot. I also think that his like. The original one, the, the wrist became very loose pretty quickly. His wrists seem pretty nice. They're not too loose. They seem a little stiff, like he should be able to hold things up okay. The, uh, the, the problem with the original one, too, I think, was like he couldn't get like a really good grip on his gun. Like it kept on sliding around. Yeah, this, this kind of has that going on, too, where you kind of have to, like, you know, find the right nook or cranny in there to get it to stay straight i really like the way his gun looks too you know i've been playing a lot of uh, luigi's mansion 3 and you know you have to turn in you you like release that uh 
Gooigi or whatever. So I like these because these look like these weapons are just made out of goo. You know, they look like they're made out of mutagen because they're, you know, translucent and just the color of them. So all of this is pretty neat. Last year I took an extremely excessive look at um, the Ultimates Mutagen Man and compared him to the original 1990 action figure just to see like how close they were able to get everything. Um, I'm not going to do that here because <laughs> I already did it very, like I said, very, very thorough. If you haven't checked that out, you should check out that video. But uh, here's a spoiler. They pretty much matched like all the formations of his flesh and everything like that perfectly. Like you could even see here the way that the arm is built. You have like the chunks here on the, the back of the arm and just the shapes. All the shapes like match like crazy. Um, even proportionately, a lot of his body is very similar. Um, and some of this is just very, it, it's more realized, you know, it's, it's a little bit more practical or something like the tubes all look really nice on here where this, they're a little flat and stuff. Um, you still have like this, uh, self-destruct button on his, uh, this forearm, even the shapes of the feet and everything like that is spot on. Like, it, it is crazy how close they were able to get this guy to the original guy. Like, he is quite on it. Like, it's like if Super Mario gets the mushroom and he, you know, just gets bigger. Um, my thing is broken, so that falls out all the time. But, yeah. Lots of cool stuff. Like I said, the, the attention to detail here is stunning. So let's just talk about the big ultimates. Now, when they made this uh, glow-in-the-dark Mutagen Man action figure, they really didn't put all the same amount of paint and stuff like that on him. I guess because you just want him to, like, glow and kind of look cool. I mean, like... All right, so here. When you have glow-in-the-dark characters like this, um, I still like to use these kind of guys in your regular display, right? So that's why I kind of wish the profile on the back of the card would have said something cool. But, I mean, you could make up something like that in your head. Like, like this guy, maybe like a little chunk of Mutagen Man fell off and it started to form its own body. Sort of like Carnage, you know, was like a, uh, like the offspring of Venom or something like that. And it grew into its own thing. Maybe it's even more mindless and unable to control and stuff like that. So this is like the son of Mutagen Man. And that's how you could pretend that, like... You know, the Ninja Turtles can hang out with Mutagen Man and fight this glow-in-the-dark Mutagen Man at the same time. I know, it's a very cliche idea, but when you're trying to put your stuff on display, you kind of want to have, like, an excuse as to why there are two Mutagen Mans. It's like with Marvel Legends, I have, like, you know, a ton of Green Goblins. And I'm like, okay, well, this is, uh, what... <sighs> the psychologist guy, what's his name? Clint Barton, is that correct? Or is that Hawkeye? Oh my gosh, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm not doing too good. And then you'd be like, one guy's Harry, one guy's Norman. Uh, all right, so, you know, they cut out a lot of these paint apps. Like, there is, like, a wash on top of his body or, like, light, just, like, light uh, shading throughout his arm or his flesh. There isn't really any kind of... Uh, shading or anything like that on the actual muscle definition so that's a flat color um you know what would have been cool is if you guys could like actually change body parts or like masters of universe origins and you could kind of like combine parts of this guy with this guy like maybe you get tired of this purple um supports uh life support system and maybe you want to have this there instead or maybe you want to change the guts or something like that but it's still very neat you know uh I liked the original one because you sort of had like that like purple wash on it that really made the uh where's that purple with a red wash I don't know but it looks cool like sometimes when you look at the glow in the dark one because everything is sort of flat and a lot of there's a certain sameness about something you kind of um when you look at like the guts inside of there you sort of lose some of what you're looking at uh, where this guy, everything stands out nice and clean. Like, that's right in your face. And this is just kind of like, you kind of have to, you know, really pay attention to it. There are, like, some paint differences, too. Like, you know, this is all, like, metallic gold. And on um, the original Ultimate Action figure, 
you have sort of like a um, like a flat blue, and then you have for certain highlights the metallic blue, which really looks neat and really makes them look um, like you. I wouldn't say unique, but just nice little details and nice little touches. Um, he does have like the same screw highlights. They're both gold. They're the same gold. Um, and then you have the yellow tanks on his back. Um, there's like a little hole. I never noticed this before until now, but it looks like there's a little peg that comes off of the uh, the back of these uh, the see-through um, case and sticks into the back of his brain to keep that brain in place. Like I said, I, for some reason, I just never noticed that it existed there. Um, this part on top here, the pink is actually pretty similar. It's just a little more pink, I guess. I don't know. Just in general, everything looks very neat, and I'm glad that I have both of these guys to, uh, you know, put on display and whatnot. So now we're done with the overly excessive uh, figure comparison, and now we're on to the ultimate test. You know, how well does this mutagen man glow in the dark? I decided to include um, Super 7's other glow-in-the-dark action figures, plus NECA's Muck Man, you know, just to see how they all compare. Who will be the best? We shall see. So I'll turn off my lights. All right, <laughs> so... It's very hard to tell on camera here, but uh, I would say that Mutagen Man, uh, the glow-in-the-dark Toxic Avenger, I don't think the other Toxic Avenger was supposed to actually glow. He had, like, some different things you could do with temperature to change his colors. So Mutagen Man, glow-in-the-dark Toxie, and glow-in-the-dark Mumra all glow fine. I'm actually a little disappointed. I thought that NECA Muck Man was going to be super glow-in-the-dark, but it's actually not. I find it almost impossible to get the glow-in-the-dark feature on film, but if I do change my iPad to photo, I mean, you can see some pretty awesome glow-in-the-dark shots of these guys. Uh, Baxter looks awesome, although, like, Baxter to me, in person, that blue is not as, like, vibrant as, you know, these photos. It's very faint, where Mutage Man actually is, you know, bright. You know, his glow feature actually glows pretty well. And man, take a look at that mouser. You know, that's pretty cool. And, you know, I might as well just end this with a, you know, a nice close-up shot of Mutagen Man's face. Ooh, freaky. Now on to accessories. And first up is the Mutagen Machine Gun. Now, of course, the original one looks like this. You know, the one that came with the Wave 2 Ultimates Mutagen Man. It's the exact same mold. You know, nothing different here. The biggest difference is, you know, the color. This one's made out of like a a slime neon green color, and this one is yellow with these nice uh, uh, metallic yellow highlights, or golden highlights. You know, of course, it's based off of the original Mutagen machine gun that came out in 1990. Uh, a very cool-looking weapon, you know, but no paint highlights or anything like that. So the Ultimates version is actually a step up, you know? Lots of times I complain about how um, Super 7 doesn't add any kind of painted detail to their weapons. You know, of course this could have used more, but I still like the uh, the nice little highlights that they actually did add, you know? It really sets it above, I guess. Um, but yeah, this thing is pretty cool looking. And best of all, it glows in the dark. And here's another angle, just so you can see how this thing really glows. Now we're on to the gooey garbage. And uh, first we'll talk about the gooey garbage weapons rack. This is cool. I like, you know, the original one had such a nice design. And this was all brand new stuff that uh, Super 7 had made up. This did not exist in the old original toy line. So it was kind of cool seeing how all these were connected together. They're, in the original toy line, they were just kind of kept together with like a little thin piece of plastic, you know, didn't have this very nice uh, display that you got right here. Like, I'm never going to pull these off, you know, so it's always just kind of sit like this in my box, but it's just kind of a cool thing to have. Uh, none of the details are painted or anything like that. And if you look at the glow-in-the-dark one, it is exactly, you know, the same. It's, nothing's painted. It's just that nice slime glow-in-the-dark green. And uh, yes, all this stuff does indeed glow-in-the-dark. Now we're up to the separated gooey garbage. 
Now, this is where I was, you know, disappointed with the original Mutage Man Ultimates action figure. You know, because he's so cool. He's awesome. He's gigantic. You know, it's a very intimidating, very creepy and disgusting looking. But there was, you know, the original Mutage Man. You could pull off his skull cap or the skull plug on the top of his head and you could stick all the gooey garbage inside of his body. You could not pull off the skull, the skull cap and put the gooey garbage into his body. Uh, the hole is just too close to his brain, so you won't be able to fit any of these objects inside of there. Which, to me, it like almost makes these things sort of useless, you know? Because what are you going to do with these? You're not just going to like lay these on your display in random places. That's That's weird. Everybody wanted to put these things inside of this guy's body, but you can't. All right, and I'm like, just also, also just think how awesome it would have been to shove all these things into your glow in the dark mutage man, right? So then you had all these little extra bits and pieces in there floating around, glowing in the dark. Man, that would have been awesome if you could actually like put something into his body to make these sort of like, you know, stay in place around in there like a slime or something like that without it dripping out. <sighs> man. That would have been such an amazingly cool glow-in-the-dark Mutage Man action figure. My other complaint is just the, uh, you know, they painted these, but they didn't paint them all the best. Like, the wrench looks okay. I'll even give them the turtle, because turtles, you know, they're all green. You could have maybe made his shell a little darker. But this weird neon green fish is kind of strange. Making the eyeball just yellow is weird. Like, wouldn't you make it, like, white? Even if you're making, like, the, you know, the, the nerve white. It still would have been better than yellow. The pizza has no cheese or sauce or anything like that on top of it. It's just crust. And the bone is okay. I'll give him that one too. And then the apple core, it's like, well, you know, that's a okay green color, but then the inside of it should be white or something. I don't know. They just didn't want to go the extra mile to add all these extra little details. So let's, you know, get back on track here and talk about the glow in the dark gooey garbage. You know, how well does it glow in the dark? The gooey garbage glows in the dark really well, actually, you know, they, it, it looks really good. Uh, so because I have this magical thing called scotch tape, we can actually take a look and see what it might look like if you had this gooey garbage floating in Mutage Man's body as it glowed into the dark. So let's take a look. Man, that just bums me out more and more, taking a look at him. He looks awesome with the gooey garbage floating around in his body, all glowing in the dark. What a missed opportunity, unfortunately. And last, but not least, actually, you know what? This is least. Um, he, he has two sets of hands. I mean, when you're talking about his accessories and you're talking about a mutagen machine gun, you're like, well, hands are definitely not as cool as that cool weapon. So he just has a set of gripping hands. And as I showed you, he can hold the, uh, the mutagen machine gun. You're not gonna have him hold the gooey garbage. I mean, face it, you're not gonna have him do that. And then he just has a set of fists which is great you know that way you can have them pound either the good guys or the bad guys and uh that is all so here you can see this brand new glow-in-the-dark mutagen man with some of the past mutagen mans wow what a crazy year last year was right we got the uh wave two ultimates mutagen man we got the uh, the NECA fred wolf series mutagen man and then we got the uh glow-in-the-dark exclusive pretty crazy i mean since 1990 we only had the one from the 2012 show and now we have five all together you know i don't count like the reaction figures and stuff like that to me these are like real action figures i guess i also don't count like bobbleheads or anything like that i don't even know if there is like a mutagen man like bobblehead or some little guy with a giant mutagen man head i don't know to me these are the five mutagen men um you know, my favorite will always be the original from 1990. Even though I thought the episode with Mutage Man was pretty good, I don't think that his design was as cool as that one. You know, it was still pretty neat, but it's still a little more, you know, cartoony. Um, so for me, my favorite would be the original. And then, of course, like, you know, the original Ultimates Wave 2 Mutage Man would be second. Um, you know, the Fred Wolf series is good. The only one that I don't really care for that much is the 2012 Mutage Man. Um, just because that toy is not a great looking toy. It'll be exciting to see what kind of Mutagen Man action figures we get in the future. I mean, it took 32 years from this dude to these other guys, you know. Hopefully, we don't have to wait that long to get more awesome Mutagen Man action figures. I mean, I mean, there is no other reference for Mutagen Man. The only th other thing they can do is maybe 
build one off of the initial like Peter Laird <laughs> artwork, you know, whatever he was trying to design, Mutagen Man, maybe they could release a Mirage action figure of that. Um, but most likely we're just going to have to wait and see what kind of new Ninja Turtle cartoon comes out and if Mutagen Man is actually a part of that show. I guess they could also uh, put out a uh, an IDW Mutagen Man. I think, you know, Mutagen Man wasn't in Archie Comics. He wasn't in Mirage Comics or anything like that. So the IDW Mutagen Man is probably your final and uh, best bet for future Mutagen Man action figures. Whether you buy this guy for his very cool glow-in-the-dark action feature or his amazingly eye-catching brand new color scheme, you're going to be happy. You know, I'm very glad that I picked this guy up and uh, in my display, he will be a Mutagen Man clone and he will surely hog my attention when the lights are on and off. So let me know what you think. Have a good one and talk to you later.